The Singapore International Energy Week is underway with leaders, experts and policymakers sharing ideas and approaches to transition to a net zero future here in Asia. Nuclear power getting a fresh look as demand for electricity and clean energy grows. The controversial power source appeared to be heading for a decline, but now there appears to be a global renaissance of sorts. The private sector and governments are re-examining nuclear power amid growing populations and their surging power consumption. But joining us from the Singapore International Energy Week is the Director General of the World Nuclear Association, Sama Bill Bowie Leon. Dr. Sama, thank you very much for joining us on Asia First. I want to start by asking you what the main argument would be for the world to adopt nuclear power. We know it's not cheap and we know it takes a long time to build a nuclear power plant. Well, uh, good morning to you. Um, thank you for having me. No, I think that maybe we need to revisit our assumptions. I mean, it is not true that nuclear power is more expensive. It is not true that nuclear power plants take longer than other uh, technologies. I mean, we have just the example of the United Arab Emirates, that they've gone from zero to 25% of their electricity coming from nuclear power in 12, 13 years. So clearly that is very fast. And we are seeing uh, many, many countries in the world that are, first of all, recognizing the essential role of nuclear energy today. Uh, we have 10% of the global electricity coming from nuclear energy, the largest source of carbon-free electricity in the OECD countries, the second largest uh, in the world, only behind, behind uh, hydropower. So we have many countries that are revisiting that, and we are seeing a global increase in interest in actually tripling the global nuclear capacity by 2050. Okay, that's it. We, we, we know, Dr. Sama, the world is looking for a way to make that transition from fossil fuels to low-carbon energy sources. The IPCC uh, mm -hmm. saying nuclear power is still going to take too long, despite what you've just said, is still relatively expensive compared to wind, compared to mm -hmm. solar. In the meantime, we had Saudi Aramco CEO mm -hmm. saying hydro and solar have basically failed and fossil fuels are here to stay, but it probably has a vested interest. So what does your research data say, you know, about all this, making that transition? Well, so our, our uh, research says that we are going to need, as I mentioned, at least uh, triple global nuclear capacity if we are serious about meeting uh, the Paris Agreement goals in a manner that is cost effective and equitable. So, so that's, and, and that is just to meet the current demand. So if we take into account that nuclear energy is today the only energy source that can produce electricity and heat without carbon emissions, which makes it, of course, a perfect uh, choice if you want to decarbonize the entire uh, economy. It's not just electricity. Electricity is very important, but there are many other sectors of the economy, the metallurgical industry, the petrochemical industry, the chemical industry, ammonia, hydrogen, etc. All those sectors are going to need heat, and heat cannot, cannot be produced with wind or solar. So, so this is where nuclear energy brings an enormous opportunity to the global economy. And then let me just remind you, uh, the, the facts are that nuclear power plants, in average, globally, uh, take about 5.8 years, that is the medium uh, amount of time that takes for a nuclear power plant to be built. And taking into account that this is an investment that is going to survive for 60, 80, perhaps 100 years, clearly this is a very good investment that is going to provide constant, uh, uh, very affordable electricity that is not depending on the weather, on the season, on geopolitics. Okay, a lot of reasons for countries to consider nuclear power. Your point taken and noted. Mm -hmm. However, I mean, based on data from your own website, um, the, the main countries who have nuclear power plants tend to be the bigger ones, tend to be the richer ones. We're talking about China, we're talking about Japan, South Korea. The middle countries, the middle mm -hmm. powers, the smaller ones, you know, are hesitant. I mean, uh, it, that appears to still be a consideration cost. And the other consideration, obviously, as well, 
which we hear in Singapore, you know, from time to time as well, is about safety. I mean, what, what's your response to those two in particular? Well, okay, so when we are looking, so let me just take the, the global point of view right now. So right now we have uh, in all continents of the world very serious interest. Uh, and when I say interest, I see actual steps to nuclear projects in all continents. In North America, both uh, uh, Canada, United States are moving forward with large and small reactors. In South America, Brazil, Argentina are doing exactly the same. In Europe, we have uh, at least 18 countries in Europe that are looking to to maintain their current fleet and to expand it. We have newcomer countries like Poland, like, like Estonia, like Turkey, like Egypt. And we have also in, in the Middle East, of course, I mentioned earlier, UAE, we have Saudi Arabia, we have Kazakhstan, we have Uzbekistan in, in Central Asia. And then, of course, when we look for, for uh, Southeast Asia, China, India, Japan, Korea, and of course we have a few countries uh, in the ASEAN region, uh, Philippines, we have uh, Indonesia, Vietnam. All these countries are either having nuclear power today and or they are looking to have it in the future, I mean Bangladesh, uh, Pakistan. As far as, uh, so, so to me this tells you that, that there is a global recognition of the current role of nuclear and they are looking uh, to actually expand this role. So it is not one or two countries, it's, as I said, it's more than 35, 40 countries all over the world. As far as safety, the record states very clearly that nuclear energy is the safest form of producing electricity compared to all the other energy sources. When you look at the total number of fatalities, which unfortunately is how we measure safety uh, for any other energy source. So that is, that is what the record states. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to ask you about one advancement, uh, Dr. Sama, and that's uh, the SMR, the small modular reactor, which Google and Amazon are reportedly investing in, even Singapore. Curious, after previously saying the island is too small and too densely populated, um, is it all hype or do you see SMRs as truly the way forward for Asia's crowded cities and growing industrial power needs at the same time? Well, I do think that SMRs, small modular reactors, will have a role to play in many places, perhaps Singapore and other places in, South, uh, in Southeast Asia may be part of that. I do also think that large reactors do continue to have a very important role. As I say, if we are serious about meeting uh, the, the Paris Agreement, we really need to triple global nuclear capacity at the very least, which means that we are probably going to need uh, a lot more capabilities, a lot more capacity. Some of these new reactors will be large, some of these new reactors will be small. I mean, as far as Singapore, uh, certainly the, the people in Singapore and the government of Singapore will make, of course, their own decisions on what's best for them. But uh, given that nuclear energy is such a concentrated uh, energy source that requires relatively a small amount of space, very small amount of fuel and critical materials, uh, certainly it is potentially a very good choice for Singapore uh, given the small landmass area that we have here. And in fact, uh, one of the options that's, that has been uh, proposed for Singapore are uh, floating reactors. So these are already being used in other countries in the world. These are producing electricity, heat and fresh water for some uh, remote locations in North uh, East uh, Russia. So this is again a small reactor that is floating on the on the ocean, uh, not even taking any space in the in the in the landmass. Okay, Dr. Sama, we do have to leave it there. Thank you very much for talking to us here on Asia First from the uh, Singapore International Energy Week. We were speaking with Dr. Sama Bilbo E. Leon, Director General at the World Nuclear Association.